Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Bridges. Yes, thank you. One score. Saturday night, Glasgow, thank you. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome along. The Hydro, wow, this place. 16 nights I'm doing here, 16, thank you. Good people for that, 16. One Direction, only doing two, I'm doing 16. I've got Harry Styles on the phone. All right, Kev, I in. Any chance you can tap is a score. <laughs> We're here. It is DVD night looking well. Everybody looking resplendent. You need to look your best Christmas day, sitting watching it, pausing it, trying to find yourself. <laughs> There's Big Gordon for next door. Who's that he's sitting beside? That's no Stacey. Big Gordo, the shagger. <laughs> the dark horse. <laughs> Well done for coming to something. Well done. Good of you. Well done. It's difficult coming to something. I don't underestimate for a second the challenges involved. It's a lot of effort. I don't think we ever take the time to show our appreciation for the heroes in there, the unsung heroes, people amongst you who organise these nights, people who know when shit goes on sale, <laughs> people who sit on Ticketmaster, Page cannot be displayed. <laughs> Server timed out. The people who composed that original group text. <laughs> Assembling the troops. The people who dared to dream that a night out could be possible. <laughs> Sitting, dealing with people's replies, trickling in, sucking at the enthusiasm. Oh, Kevin Bridges, oh, what night is it? Where is it? How much is it? What time does it start? <laughs> What time does it finish? Uh, who else is going? <laughs> who else is going? What a fucking snide inquiry. <laughs> That's when the organisers faced with the internal politics of the social circle. <laughs> Your night out needs a big name to confirm. <laughs> a headline act, an A-lister pal. A crackpot, disco, Rizo, Nasher, somebody that can turn your night out into four nights out. <laughs> ah, it's only wee Scobie gone so far. <laughs> I know he's a wee prick, but he'll drive. <laughs> Welcome along, front row. How we doing? You alright? Looking good. How you doing, sir? You alright, mate? You can reply, mate, it's live. It's not the fucking telly yet. <laughs> We're only making a DVD. It's not actually the DD's first. That 3D telly's a fucking beauty. <laughs> good man. What's your name, sir? You're not telling me. All right, that's good. <laughs> What's his name, mate? Fucking grass him in since he's not telling me. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. You settling for that, Johnny? All right, it's only a comedy show, Johnny. You're not getting booked by the police. It's just a wee. <laughs> Camera right on Johnny there, that's it mate. You make him feel like shit for that. There we go, that's Johnny, everybody. <laughs> Tell your name to the character, Johnny. <laughs> Good man, welcome along, Johnny. I like a night out. I'm, I'm getting to that age. I'm, I'm growing up, I've got mates. I'm getting married and having children. This is new to me, my life's changing. You don't get a night out as often. The weekend is no longer an excuse in itself. You don't get a night out, it's rare, but when, it, when they happen, and it's a rollover, and they go on far too long. <laughs> I don't think anybody can party with the newly married man, the new, the new father. That's, I, hear, I hear One Direction singing, but we're gonna go crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> until they see the sun, and rappers singing, gonna party, until six in the morning. All oh, these parties that have got scheduled end times. <laughs> 
that's not what happens when your mates start getting married and having children and you get a night out. They go on far too fucking long. People don't want to go back <laughs> to the life that they're creating for themselves. <laughs> Mayhem ensues at the suggestion of a six in the morning curfew. <laughs> These want to call it a night. Monty, fuck, man. One mere hour, the spars open. We'll go and get cans. The adult empty. It's a bleak affair. The empty. Ten years on. <laughs> Some paranoid wreck walking through your living room looking for a Nokia charger. <laughs> Seventeen missed calls. I better fucking text her. Highlights of a game of FIFA on the PlayStation that was finished about three hours ago. Still playing. <laughs> Two guys snorting cocaine, talking about a fight they had in primary school. <laughs> Listen, I'm fucking glad we sorted that the night, bud. Me and all, mate. I was out of order that playtime. I was out of order. <laughs> Thirty-five-year-old guy still using expressions like playtime. <laughs> that was me. It was out of order, mate. I'm the one that kept throwing fizzy cola bottles at you. I knew <laughs> you had to be seen to be doing something about that, mate. I understand. You never, you never need to call us a VL, but that was out of order on your part. <laughs> Six in the morning, Nokia guy arguing with his missus by text. I told you I was having a mad one. <laughs> his only justification for having a mad one. He fucking told her he was having a mad one. <laughs> and then staying on the offensive. I thought you were going to your mum's to watch Strictly anyway. <laughs> it's fucking six o'clock in the morning, Ryan. How the fuck am I supposed to know what time Strictly finishes? <laughs> then looking at the telly, looking at the PlayStation, thinking it's fucking Sky Sports. <laughs> Here, when did Motherwell beat Columbia? Fucking some result for the well, is it? <laughs> Columbia have their full team playing, eh? <laughs> I wish I'd stuck money on that. Seven red cards, is there a bit of needle between the two? <laughs> Six in the morning. That's tough. Watching guys grow up against their will. Watching somebody going through an old VHS case that's been used as a joint rolling station for years. <laughs> Raking through the paraphernalia, trying to find something smokable. <laughs> there's a bit of green in there, I'll press my finger on that. <laughs> ah, there's plenty here, gentlemen, the night is but young. <laughs> ah, a bit of green stuff, tobacco, scrape that in, hells. There's always hells in the rolling tray. I thought, I'll put the pubes in, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Lying there in emotional purgatory, trying to get a knackered disposable lighter to work. The only lighter in the party. <laughs> Them big long flicks. I'm on your piece of shit. <laughs> Eventually, getting a bit of blue flame and going, yes. And then the S blows it straight back out again. <laughs> it's hard to watch a married man lighting a pube joint off the toaster. Do you take drugs, Johnny? <laughs> There's a cameraman, that's it. You hinder his future employment prospect. <laughs> I'm only joking, I, I don't take drugs. I used, I used to smoke weed, Johnny. I used to smoke, I get, I get busted. You know how I get caught? We were having fajitas one Sunday as a family and I rolled a fucking belter. And it aroused far too much suspicion. <laughs> From that day forward, I was under surveillance. 
it was evident I had obtained these skills elsewhere, no doubt through illicit activity, as this was the first time we had ever sampled Mexican cuisine as a family. <laughs> I'm taking a back seat, letting everybody else go first. They're putting together these big abominations, big baggy, reckless bastards. <laughs> Salsa bombers going down their T-shirts. <laughs> I'm biding my time, just surveying the devastation at the table, the mess. My own family, a disgrace to the art of rolling. <laughs> then I stepped up. I'm saying, pass me the skins, eh, the tortillas, damn. <laughs> I took three tortillas out of the packet. <laughs> There's the hash smokers in there. <laughs> Are you having free fajitas, Kevin? <laughs> no, Gran, I'm going to stick these together with some guacamole. <laughs> don't worry, Gran, you'll get a pass. <laughs> and don't hog it, I know what you like, and don't get it all wet at the end. <laughs> Putting the grated cheese right across my set up there. You get a grinder for a chick? Don't say grinder, shut up. No, I'm always, no, no, no. Rolled it up, tucked it right in. Asking my gran to take it off her crucifix so I could just stuff a bit down at the end there. <laughs> just about stopped myself before I ripped a bit of cardboard off the old El Paso box. <laughs> Six in the morning. Where are you from, Johnny? Eldrie, Eldrie, good to see. There we go, we've got a wee fan club there. Cut all people. Woo! People booing Eldrie, obviously. Coat Bridge. Coat Bridge, Eldrie. Anybody, anybody not from Scotland? Anybody come further afield than Eldrie? Which is a pretty depressing question to ask. <laughs> South Africa, all right, my lady, my lady. I only know that for the Oscar. I just know South Africa for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> The Pistorius trial, that's all I've got for you. That was... <laughs> that was a great holiday, wasn't it? Watching the murder trial. Oh, my lady, I didn't know it was Reva, my lady. <laughs> if only that had made it to South Africa. <laughs> when somebody was talking shite. That's what that trial needed, a whole jury. Oh, my lady, I didn't know it was her. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> that was good. Oh, you should have got him steaming. That's, a, that's how you get the truth out of any man. Get him fucking hammered. <laughs> That's a, that's a lie detector in court. Get a few cans on him, let him start unwinding a bit. Then get him on the shots, and then get him to the point he's lighting his fag, but he's talking that much shite, his fag keeps going up. Then he's hammered. <laughs> All right, I'll fucking tell you what happened. I was busting for a shite. Hey. <laughs> and she was taking fucking ages. <laughs> I was touching cloth, my lady, and I panicked. <laughs> South Africa. Am they not from Scotland? Where have we got? Where are you from? Detroit. 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 No fucking shit, man. <laughs> Detroit. Genuinely. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer from Detroit. How long have you been in Glasgow, Jennifer? A decade. A decade. That's that's ten year in Glasgow. <laughs> top. Ten year, you say. None of that decade shit. You would fail your citizenship test on that, Jennifer. <laughs> Ten year. You don't say years, none of that plural pish either. Ten year. <laughs> you get a very honest game of Scrabble in Glasgow. <laughs> years? Nah, he's not getting five for that, no chance. <laughs> Detroit, no fucking way, man. I love from Scotland. We're on the map. We attract tourists, people from all what People give a fuck about Scotland these days. What's the fuck happening here? We got put on the map, especially last year. We had the Civil War, didn't we? Scotland. 
People ask, I had an American Jennifer in a pub in New York asking me about that, about the, the big vote we had, the guy, it's, it's difficult to explain. The guy's going, hey, hey man, are you from Scotland? And I said, yes. I was going to say I, but I translated. <laughs> I said, yes. I'd been on the Rosetta Stone prior to the trip. <laughs> and the guy goes, what the fuck happened over there, man, in Scotland? Like, who would have thought Scotland would vote against freedom? Like, what the fuck? And I go, that was a bit more complicated than that, pal. <laughs> and he's going, what about William Wallace and Robert the Bruce? You guys fucking said no. I will be for Asda. We're going to put their prices up. We're a proud people, pal, but I don't know how much we're prepared to pay for crispy pancakes. Right. <laughs> that was a crazy time, wasn't it? Scotland, it left us questioning our whole identity. Even I'm looking at Scottish money. No wonder the English don't accept this shit. Who is that guy? <laughs> That's not the fucking Queen, mate. It's not the Queen. I know it's not the Queen, mate. I don't know who it is. It's just some guy, mate. <laughs> Just Clydesdale Bank's employee of the month or somebody. <laughs> oh, we'll just be happy for the wee guy. Picture him in a house party. Six in the morning, showing his pals his note. I'm on the note like that, rolling up, snorting coke through it. <laughs> Look at me no more, I'm a tenor. Uh, we all get into it, don't we? Politics. We've got a whole country that could go back and reset higher modern studies. It's good. It's an education. <laughs> Sitting on Facebook, posting links to articles you've not even read yet. That was us. <laughs> People threatening to leave the country. Michelle Moan. She left, didn't she? Michelle Moan. Something. <laughs> Something needs to sit her down. Michelle Moan. Moan, Michelle. Moan. Moan to fuck, Michelle. <laughs> you a political man, Johnny? Nah, you don't give a shit. Nah. I watch it, I get into it. I like the politics. I've started buying the big paper. I never knew the big papers were as expensive. I just thought it would just be the same price. No, standing in the queue, news agent, my pound coin, making plans for the change. <laughs> a one pound eighty. Oh fuck, do you take card, mate? <laughs> yeah, only if it's over a fiver. Oh, uh, just, alright, a Daily Telegraph and 16 packets of hubba bubba, mate. That's just like, <laughs> I watch it. The Tories, that's what I've got. Reducing the deficit, the economy. That's what's going on. Austerity Britain, making cuts. I watch, I watch them. David Cameron, we must, we must work together to reduce the deficit. That's what's going on. Reducing the deficit. I read about the deficit. Do you know about the deficit, big guy? Do you know Britain's debt? No, 1.5 trillion pound. That's how much the UK owes somebody. <laughs> 1.5 trillion pound. I don't know who the fuck we owe that to, but <laughs> surely they've gave up on it. Surely. <laughs> surely when it hit the trillion mark, they must have been having their doubts about ever seeing it back. <laughs> I've enjoyed Greece. I like their attitude. That's how you treat debt. It's <laughs> been a great time. It's got to the end. Everybody's on their case. The IMF, the EU, and they're just telling them to go and fuck themselves. Good on. <laughs> well done, Greece. Angela Merkel on the phone, going fucking mental. <laughs> Greece have just got her on loudspeaker, just laughing at her. <laughs> Sitting drinking bottles of Ouzo, letting her shout at them. <laughs> you must make the repayment now! <laughs> 240 billion euros! Looking through books on Greek philosophy, trying to quote their way out of the mess. 
Angela, as Socrates said, <laughs> he is richest who is content with least. That's a fucking beauty, man. Any more? <laughs> Or as Epicurus said, do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not, Angela. <laughs> yeah, let me talk to you. <laughs> or as Plato says, you're not getting it, you fucking cow. <laughs> On them. Everybody knows somebody like Greece. I've got mates like Greece. <laughs> They're likeable, but you don't lend them money unless you're prepared to deal with a shite when you try and get it back. <laughs> well, have you seen that? Johnny, Greece actually accused Germany of owing Greece 279 billion euros because of the Nazi occupation in the 1940s. Fucking classic tactics. Well, we weren't going to mention it, Angela, but since you're chasing us up... <laughs> uh, we're paying it back. 1.5 trillion. That's the plan. Reduce the deficit. The deficit means you spend too much money. Don't bring enough money in. Tory solution. Make cuts. I think we just need to start making some more fucking money. <laughs> All these billionaire psychos putting their taxis into the Cayman Islands. They tell you that as if the money's irretrievable. Fuck invade the Cayman Islands. <laughs> Get it back. What the fuck are the Cayman Islands going to do about it? <laughs> Instead of getting after disabled people and fucking single parents. That takes balls. It? That takes balls. George Osborne, Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> Going through disabled people's doors, this is your fucking fault, mate. You. We could go after tax avoiding multinationals, we could go after Vodafone, Starbucks, Amazon, Google, Gary Barlow, but it's your fucking fault. <laughs> you. <laughs> you're going back to work, mate. We don't give a fuck how disabled you are. <laughs> or you're paralysed from the neck down. We don't give a fuck, mate. There'll be a farm out there looking for a scarecrow. <laughs> fucking <good. laughs> Couple of people checking for the offside flag on that joke there. <laughs> Maybe an extreme example, but that's. <laughs> that's their ideal world, cutting benefits, and people fall for it. People believe it. I hear folk moaning. I hear them. See them on Facebook. You discover through Facebook you hate your own fucking aunties. Uh. <laughs> Reading their shite. I, I have worked. I have worked my whole life, and I, I, I've worked two jobs since I've been 12 years old. And I think it's a disgrace that these people are sitting on their fat arses. <laughs> They're spending their dole checks on alcohol and cigarettes. It's a darn right disgrace. <laughs> Missing the point, man. They're spending it on alcohol and cigarettes. Highly taxable goods. The country's getting it back. These people are reinvesting. <laughs> These people are the heroes in this mess. <laughs> it's not poor people spending, it's fucking rich people saving. That's the problem. <laughs> the money's there. Just need to get it to people that will fucking spend it. I would put the dole up. I would make the dole a grand a week. That's how you kickstart an economy. <laughs> Every bit of it would get spent. I mean, you see it on Black Friday. That's poor people. Imagine them on a thousand pound a week. The country would be fucking bouncing. <laughs> Not one penny going offshore or into your savings account. Let's get fucking tattoos, man. <laughs> people arriving at the job centre in taxis to sign on. Just keep your meter running, my man. I'll be five minutes. <laughs> That's the door up to a grand a week, Denise. You still want your touch done? 
I will get the hot tub. Aye, fuck it, why not? Grand a week. <laughs> I've made a bit of dosh, thanks to you people. I have fucking moved on. I've, I've made some cash. <laughs> I'm on the... I'm on the property ladder. That's what I've done. Bought a house. I bought a house off a neurologist. That builds a inferiority complex. I'm showing up by his gaff in a fucking super dry hoodie. Guys gave me the tour. <laughs> Showing me his PhD. That's nice, mate. We'll get that done. Get that painting of the dogs playing poker up there. That'll be nice. <laughs> I grew up in a council house. I grew up in Claybank. A couple of people know that. <laughs> Famous place. Famous for wet, wet, wet. <laughs> Marty Pello. He's the only guy who ever left Claybank to become a heroin addict. But I'm in the West End, I'm in the nice bit of the city, I'm living. <laughs> I'm living with the great and the good, and I, I, it's, it's where I live. I've been there for a few years, but it's never quite become my bit. I mean, <laughs> you've got where you stay, and you've got your bit. <laughs> hey, that makes sense. There's where you live, and there's your bit. It's not, it's not quite my, I don't, I don't know if it'll ever become my bit. I see, I see the kids whose bit it is, I hear them shouting on each other, Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian, we're over here, Sebastian. <laughs> I hear a name like Sebastian. I'm hoping to look up and see a Dalmatian. Not a sweet fucking guy. <laughs> Sebastian making his grand entrance with his purple blazer on, his perm wafting in the wind, a cello on his back. They call me Mr. Bridges, the kids in my street. I don't feel intimidated physically. I feel intellectually intimidated by the gangs of youth <laughs> in my street. M Mr. Bridges, Mr. Bridges, how are we? How are we, Mr. Bridges? Oh. Well, the family and I sat down to one of your performances on the television over the festive period, Mr. Bridges. <laughs> A tad coarse in places. However, I would be lying if I said I didn't allow myself a chuckle, Mr. Bridges. <laughs> a wee guy, I'm at my fucking depth trying to talk to him. <laughs> I'm having to raise my game to talk to a ten-year-old. <laughs> I can't have a normal older guy to a wee guy conversation. Who's the best fighter in your school then, Sebastian? <laughs> well, I'm the chair of the school debating team, Mr. Bridges. <laughs> There have been a few heated exchanges, but we've not quite come to blows yet. <laughs> his wee pals beside him, fucking de-seeding a pomegranate with his fruit knife. Yes. <laughs> I still, I see I still wear trainers and stuff. I never knew that was frowned upon, wearing sports gear, unless you're off to participate in a sporting activity. I still wear shorts, and trainers, any excuse. I've got a neighbour. He always looks at me, he's always looking me up and down. He's always going, off to the gym, Kevin, off to the gym. <laughs> I said, mate, why do you always ask me if I'm off to the gym? You know, just when I've seen your trainers there in your sports top. <laughs> off to the gym, no? No, I'm off to the garage to buy a whisper, mate. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fucking black tie event, mate. <laughs> off to the gym. I try and blend in. I'm quite a friendly guy. I've got a dog, for example, right? That's how you get to know your new neighbours, right? You become part of your local dogging community. I get a dog, right? <laughs> That's your buddy. I get a dog. And you, you get in the, in the park, dogs there. Other dogs come over, start to play with your dog. You pat the other dog and you get talking to the owner. Quite a sociable experience, right? I'm in the park. My dog's there. Another dog came over. Began to play with my dog, began sniffing my dog's arse and <laughs> sniffing away. Having a fucking great time. I'm patting the other dog. And I said, and who's this? That's dog walker talk for what is your dog's name? That's how you strike up a bit of chat. I said, and who's this? And the guy goes, uh, this here, this is, uh, this is Diego. <laughs> and I thought, oh, naming the dog after Diego Maradona, mate. That will explain the sniffing then, right? I thought that was the ideal thing to say. Fucking hilarious. I've got a voice in my head going, Superb, Kev.
an exemplary piece of part of. This will be your bit in no time, Ken. <laughs> I'm asking his dog for the paw of God, thinking this guy is going to spread the word. Oh, yeah, I met Kev from Bridges in the Park. The guy's funny as fuck, even off duty. <laughs> the man's a scream. <laughs> but the guy said no. He said, you know, he's not named after Diego Maradona. We named him after Diego Rivera, the post-impressionist 19th century Mexican protest painter. <laughs> this was a game changer. I had fucking nothing for the guy. <laughs> wow, I looked him right in the eye. I cannot believe you've just done that to me, mate. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I've never felt so homesick. <laughs> a voice in my head going, this is not your bit, Kev. Go home. You don't belong here. You're a fucking fraud. The sniffing part of that might cut it down your bit. This is the upper echelons of society. I think you're going to get away with that up here. Even his dog is looking at your dog as if my dad just fucking clamped your dad. <laughs> and he just carried on with his day, and I'm left on my phone having to Google this asshole. Under pressure, another fucking thing that I do not know has just been exposed. I'm on Wikipedia reading about this guy. Diego Rivera was a Mexican painter known for his large wall works in the style of fresco. I don't know what that means. Let's go back to the start, Kevin. Let's concentrate. Learning is fun. Come on, this is the kind of shit you need to know to hold conversations up in this park. Diego Rivera was a Mex... You know what a Mexican is? Tequila, sombreros... <laughs> Remember that big fajita? Remember that big blunt you rolled? The Mexicans would love you, Kev. Mexican painter. You know what a painter is? Your Uncle Kenny's a painter. Remember Uncle Kenny? <laughs> Used to always sneak you and your cousins a can at Christmas. Remember? <laughs> Uncle Kenny, how come Auntie Denise lives in New Zealand? Drink your fucking can, son. Remember Uncle Kenny? <laughs> Known for his large wall works in the style of fresco. I don't know what fresco means. But fresco is highlighted in blue, meaning it's got its own Wikipedia page. Why not make an afternoon out of it? I click on that link. <laughs> I've not even made it through the opening sentence of Diego Rivera's Wikipedia page. And I'm on another Wikipedia page reading about fresco. Fresco is a technique of mural painting executed upon wet or freshly laid lime plaster. I don't know what lime plaster is, but that is also highlighted in blue. <laughs> Click on that link, Kevin. Is there anything that you do fucking know, Kev? Lime plaster. <laughs> lime plaster is a type of plaster composed of hydrated lime, water and sand. Lime plaster is different from why you're reading this, Kevin. You're supposed to be reading about Diego Rivera. Remember why we came here. Now you've went to Fresco, now you're on to Lime Plaster. You've got fucking ADD. I'm Googling. <laughs> Have I got attention deficit disorder? <laughs> I'm taking the University of Maryland six short questions to determine if I have attention deficit disorder. I'm about to diagnose myself with a mental health condition because of this fucking phone, this Tadger and his wee shitey dog. <laughs> Even my dog is looking at me as if, get over it, Kev, hurry up and throw that tennis ball. Give me a minute, Annie. I'm no well, I'm mentally ill. Please be patient. I need your support just now, dog. Taking the test, the University of Maryland, six short questions to determine if I have attention deficit disorder. Do you sometimes struggle with the finer parts of a project once the challenging parts have been finalised? All of the time, most of the time, some ten celebrities you didn't know were gay. Don't get near it, Kevin. Don't click on it. Don't fucking click on it. Don't get near it. 14 reasons you are always tired. Oh, I'm always tired. I think I might have that chronic fatigue syndrome. <laughs> Fucking finish the ADD test. How the fuck can I finish the ADD test if I've got ADD? <laughs> I went back. I read about Rivera. I got tooled up on this guy. Educated myself. 
Diego Rivera was born in 1886. Rivera began painting at the age of three years old, a year after the death of his twin brother. Rivera would paint on his bedroom walls. His parents, rather than chastise him, installed chalkboards and canvas on his bedroom walls to encourage his gift. At the age of just 10 years old, Rivera was accepted into the San Carlos Academy of Fine Art in Mexico City, where he studied until 1907, before moving to Europe, where he became friends with Pablo Picasso. Get fucking shut up, oh, <laughs> Off to the gym. I've lost a bit of weight. Don't offend anybody. No, it's that. There. Oh, shut. Lost a bit. People worry about you in this city when you lose weight. I had a guy shout, Fuck's sake, Kev, have you got AIDS? <laughs> Which is just the local way of saying, Looking sharp, Kev, you've been working out. <laughs> I've got a jaw. What that? Joe, never had a fucking jaw in my life. I've always been fat. I was fat my whole life, right through school. This has been a long time coming. I was, I was 18 stone when I was 18. I was fat, right, school. That was tough. Sitting in a plastic chair at school at the end of every class, knowing there's going to be a sea of sweat that's been separating the two hemispheres of your arse. <laughs> Sitting beside the lassie that you fancy, having to do that slide, try to wipe it as you're getting up. In fact, at school, I was the first in my class to get tits. It's hard. <laughs> Going to the swimming on a school trip. Now I'll just keep my t-shirt on. The water's dead cold. I'm alright. I'll swim my t-shirt on. <laughs> I went to a guy, 18. That's when I first addressed the problem. 18 stone. I went to the gym, the real gym, you know the big proper gym guys, the real fucking big tanks. This new breed of man that you get. You know the big mammals, the big protein bastards. Big. With a big beard covered in tattoos. They're going, mate, did I create you in a PlayStation game? <laughs> they're big guys. They work in the car phone warehouse, but they're training for the apocalypse. These big. <laughs> Convinced their best mate shagging their missus and they're training for the day they can finally prove it. <laughs> I went in, and that's what puts fat people off the gym. These guys. Take it too far. He's big. Only God can judge me. I'm standing here judging you, you big fucking bell end. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the guy. I said, Look, mate, I'm trying to lose a bit of weight. The guy goes, It's all about nutrition. All about nutrition. You can do whatever you want in here, but it's all about nutrition. You can't out train a bad diet. <laughs> and he asked me, He asked me what I had for breakfast. He goes, What do you have for your breakfast this morning? Instantly, I'm thinking I better say something that I never had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Make a good impression with this big fucking mammal. I said, oh, I had fruit, mate. A bowl of fruit. The guy's going, fruit in the morning. That's got to go. Fruit in the morning. Very high in sugar. You need to lose that. I'm thinking, fruit, mate. Fruit. That's bad for you now. Fucking fruit. <laughs> fruit. I never had a bowl of fruit, but as far as you're aware, I did have a bowl of fruit. So I should be commended. I had a fucking Terry's chocolate orange, mate. <laughs> You've no idea how low I would stoop for breakfast. Cold Pashwari and Anne with Nutella on it. I've been there, mate. <laughs> and you're on my case about fucking fruit. <laughs> I used to have four raspberry ice poles and a warm bar for breakfast. Half past eight every morning for six years. <laughs> then a rolling sausage at half past ten. A pizza crunch and chips at twelve o'clock. A can of coke. Then fucking Astra belts on the way home, fucking fizzy cola bottles, bikers, Johnny's onion rings, everything. I mean, I would... <laughs> then get home for crispy pancakes, oven chips, potato waffles, croquettes, yellow, mate. That was the only colour I would eat, yellow. <laughs> and you're on my case about fruit. I never said that because the guy would punch fuck at me, but I was thinking that. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll cut out the fruit. The guy gave me a diary to fill in, a food diary. That's a step too far, Johnny. Submitting handwritten lies to somebody. <laughs> He's telling me all these foods to cut out. Carbohydrates, you should be eating a shit, eat this stuff, eat this sort of stuff. I'm filling in my food diary on the internet, reading about superfoods, trying to impress the big man. Monday morning, I had avocado, avocado. 
Here, what the fuck's avocado? In case this guy asks me. You have it on toast? Or he'll go off his head if I say toast. <laughs> well, I just say I had avocado. How many? How many? Uh, five. Five avocado. <laughs> nah, fuck it, I'll put ten. Ten avocado. <laughs> sure, guy, I'm serious about it. Ten avocado, Monday morning, breakfast. Then I had almonds and blueberries, and then I had beetroot. Beetroot, that's a superfood, isn't it? And a big jar of beetroot, mate, get a spoon, rattled a lot. Mm. <laughs> then I had quinoa, quinoa. <laughs> Am I saying that right? Quinoa, what the fuck is quinoa? Quinoa, what the fuck is that? Click on images, that's a powder. Snorted a couple of lines of quinoa. <laughs> And then I had oily fish, and I really felt it reducing my risk of Alzheimer's, mate. And the guy's going, out. <laughs> this is great, Kev. Is this the truth? And I'm saying, no, mate, the truth would break your fucking heart. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> I lasted two meals without carbohydrates, and I thought I was going fucking insane. <laughs> I never felt so angry. I had to get off the couch and just lie on the floor, staring at the ceiling, trying to take myself to a happier place. Fantasizing about carbohydrates. I never knew what a carbohydrate was until you told me to cut them out and then you grass them all up. <laughs> I'm lying there. Oh, I would love a spaghetti toasty right now. Hmm, <laughs> how good would that be? Or a baked potato with rice in the middle. <laughs> then I could put that on a sandwich, eh? When's the last time I had a piece and baked totty and rice, eh? Hmm. <laughs> with a wee spaghetti toasty chaser. Oh, yes. <laughs> then I crumbled, mate. I went rampaging through my own kitchen in the freezer. There was a tub of Ben & Jerry's that had been there for months. Now, because it had been there for so long, the little wooden spoon that you get inside a tub of Ben & Jerry's bent and snapped on impact with the ice cream. <laughs> so I had to put the tub of Ben & Jerry's in the microwave. Now, I left it in the microwave a bit longer than I should have done, and the ice cream melted. So rather than just have a few wooden spoonfuls, as I had initially intended, I drank the fucking lot, mate. <laughs> I never knew how to fit that in to Monday evenings column. <laughs> it's too extreme. If you're fat, you're at a tremendous advantage when it comes to losing weight. You need to bear that in mind. I was 18 stone at 18, now I'm 28 and I'm 14 stone. Right, that's four stone I've lost. Thank you for those of you applauding that, applauding a man who's lost four stone in just 10 years. <laughs> Admittedly, a pretty difficult diet to market. I'm not going to get on the front cover of Reveal with that story. <laughs> How I shifted four stone in just ten years. <laughs> a before and after photograph, and it's me with a fucking school uniform on in the before. <laughs> That's simple, simple changes. That's what you need to make. That's what the, that's what the four stone in ten years programme encourages. Small, small steps. Don't, don't have McCoys, have quavers. Simple changes. <laughs> you don't need to go to bed with a two-litre bottle of Fanta and a tube of Pringles every night. Small changes. <laughs> you don't need to lose junk food. Just Google it first. What is healthy to eat from the Chinese? Go on. <laughs> Yahoo answers. Ignore the top answer some nutritionist from the University of Arkansas. Well, all Chinese food is usually fried, and it's all those very large portions, and it usually contains a chemical called monosodium glutamate, which is highly addictive and fattening. Fuck her, just keep scrolling down. <laughs> keep scrolling until you find what you want to find. Oh, but this guy, sweet and sour chicken is quite healthy as long as you peel the batter off at least three of the chicken balls. <laughs> if you're putting fried rice on a prawn cracker, just don't have a lid, just have the one prawn cracker. <laughs> 
these simple changes that will help you shift four stone in just ten years. <laughs> then the rest comes. Then you can exercise. Then you adopt a dog. That's your exercise buddy. Got the dog's trust. Get a dog that's done a bit of jail time. Adopt a rescue dog. Get up there. So the Shawshank Redemption. Two dogs to a cell. <laughs> Younger dog trying to impress you. An older dog at the back playing its harmonica. <laughs> Scraping a cup up and down the stairs. <laughs> Sneering at the younger dog. You ain't never getting out of here, boy. <laughs> I could wake that dog up having a wee dog dream lying there. <laughs> I know one hand on the belly. One will go a jog to Edinburgh. Ah, fuck it, I'm up for it. Let's go a fucking jog to Edinburgh. <laughs> Let's fucking jog back as well, me and my big fucking pal. <laughs> and you got hobbies. I took up tennis, I tried that, lasted. One night, showing up at the local tennis club. Guy's going, yeah, you're on court number four. I would eat bats, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have rackets. Of course we don't have rackets, it's my first night at a new hobby. I've got a bottle of Lucozade and a fiver, mate. That's all you bring. <laughs> Everybody knows that's all you bring in your first night at a new hobby. <laughs> Try to play tennis, you end up losing the plot. Try to self, you end up just meeting up at the net to discuss rule changes. <laughs> Will we just make it becomes the theme of the evening. <laughs> Will we just make it you can serve underarm and it can bounce anywhere? Instead of 15, 30, 40, we would just make it 1 0, 2 0, 3 0. <laughs> and your pal starts beating you as if he's fucking great at it. Starts offering you feedback. I've noticed you're lifting your head. Fuck you, as if you're any fucking good at it. <laughs> That's the sport here, isn't it? Tennis, Andy Murray. He's fucking changed this place. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought Scotland becoming a tennis country? Who would have thought? It's the working man sport, isn't it? You walk into a rough pub in Glasgow when there's tennis on. Volatile atmosphere. <laughs> no tennis colours, signs up out of the pub. <laughs> Guys arguing long into the night. You're going to sit there, Del, and tell me that Nal Bandian would beat Djokovic on a clay court. <laughs> Derek, you're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> That's how stereotypes change. Northern Ireland, they're into golf. They want to Belfast in. One guy there. Uh, good man. Bel where are you from? Belfast. Where is he? You, mate. You. What's your name? Ian. Ian. That's a fucking accent, isn't it? They make us sound like Michael Bublé earlier. Ian. <laughs> There's a bomb in the biscuit tin. Ian. <laughs> How long you been in Glasgow, Ian? Since 1985, you just get fed up with shite weather, religious intolerance. You thought, fuck this, I'm off to Glasgow. <laughs> Good man. 85. 1985. First time I was in Belfast, the hotel I was staying was beside an 80s bar. I thought that was funny. Ian, an 80s bar in Belfast, of all the cities in the world where you don't want to go and celebrate the 80s. <laughs> what the fuck goes on in there? People rubbing shite on the walls. <laughs> Petrol bombs getting chucked across the dance floor. Who gives a fuck? Karma chameleon's on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a man without conviction. No, it's changed, isn't it, Ian? Golf, that's the sport. Tennis, Scotland, golf, Northern Ireland, Rory McIlroy, Darren Clark, good to see. They've ditched the guns, bought golf clubs. Progress. <laughs> they're still chucking the odd petrol bomb, but they're shouting four. No, giving each other a bit of... <laughs> a bit of support, a bit of feedback on their game. What you gotta do there? You gotta picture the shot first. Get that fucking police station on your sides there. Just stand. <laughs> Shoulders straight, bend your fucking knees. I'll light it for you. 
Well, I'll be fat again. Don't worry, I'll be fat. I'll be back. I'm looking sharp, but I'll be back. I'm one all-inclusive holiday away from fucking meltdown. Don't worry. <laughs> Did you go on any holidays this year, big guy? Aye. Aye, aye. Where did you go, sir? Mallorca. Mallorca. You and the good lady, was it? Aye. Good man. Any big holiday arguments? No. Aye, a few. <laughs> Get the camera on him. Let's dig some dirt here. <laughs> that's, that's tradition, isn't it? And you go with your missus. Big holiday. Bust up. Big fucking 35 degree argument. <laughs> Carrying a five litre bottle of water and a lilo up a hill. Your flip-flops keep falling back down the fucking hill. <laughs> Eventually just booting them out. Fucking flip-flops on in the pavement's too warm. Where's my fucking flip-flops? Look and I go, you get that one, I'll get that one. <laughs> Five litre, how many times are you going to brush for fucking teeth on this holiday anyway? <laughs> or a water park. That's if your relationship can survive a water park argument, that's love. Sitting on a big inflatable yellow ring, trying to get the last word done before you begin your sharp decline. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Who fucking paid for the holiday? <laughs> and you need to wait, and the other one coming down, two of you buzzing. The adrenaline's gone. Put your ring back. You've cheered up, but you're fucked if you're letting your face know you've cheered up. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this bad mood. I've worked hard all year for this bad mood. <laughs> Even if something funny happens, you've got white shorts on, they're wet, everybody can see your arse cheeks and your pubes. <laughs> well, it's funny, is it, what nobody here's seen an arse before? I have. Mature. I'm mature. <laughs> I never knew guys shaved their pubes. I don't give a fuck. Ha ha, wha wha everybody laugh at me, fuck you. I like a bit of Spain. Any Spanish in? Aye, you mate. You? What part of Spain? Fucking Shettleston. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Stevie. Stevie for Spain. Stevie. <laughs> Good man, Stevie. How long have you been in Scotland, Stevie? Aye, we'll get up there. Eh? We've peaked at that, Stevie. Busted. <laughs> He'll do that show on the telly now, Stevie. Christmas Day, or he'll run to Stevie's, he gets coked up and puts that DVD on again. Fuck's sake. <laughs> so he goes like that, MD for Spain. I'm like, aye, me. <laughs> Remind it, watch it again. Everybody get in the living room, watch it. <laughs> Very funny, Stevie. Very fucking funny, buddy. <laughs> Spain, I like Spain. I like the cultural side. Siesta, I like that shit. You get to go for a lie down in the afternoon. It's called a siesta in Spain. You go for a lie down in the afternoon in Scotland, it's called depression. <laughs> People start worrying about you. You go for a siesta in this country. <laughs> Is the big man all right? Aye, eh? she frying his seat. Is he all right? He, he spoke to him. He tried to talk to him about it. No, it's just it's a lot of siestas he's going for. <laughs> I like my siesta on holiday. That's the best bit. And I don't go mental holidays anymore. Don't go with my mates. I've got bomb scare pals that don't know when to shut the fuck up. And that gets <laughs> but well spin after a few years, turning up dodgy side streets in a foreign country. People try to sell you shit. I've got mates that don't know when to shut the fuck up and keep walking. Hookers everywhere. I suck your dick. I suck your dick. <laughs> I'll suck your dick in. <laughs> well done, Barry boy. That's us all getting shot, mate. Well done. <laughs> I like the bit when you're getting fuck all done. The bit between six o'clock and before you need to go out for the night. You've done the pool during the day. You're in. That's it. The siesta. Lying on the sofa bed in the apartment with prickly heat. <laughs> Watching The Simpsons in Spanish. <laughs> Eating the local crisps. Listening to how much your fucking fruitcake Homer sounds in Spanish. Si, <laughs> pero March, que sobre los flanderos. Siempre aprendo algo nuevo. Saca algo viejo de mi mente. Do. <laughs> I 
I'll go in the shower in a minute. I think Homer's going to slit somebody's throat here. <laughs> They're nice uh, crisps. Here, get some more of uh, crisps. Ruffles. <laughs> Jamon flavour. <laughs> I went that, a culture break. Tried that, done New York, all that stuff. You get dragged around tourist attractions, a lot more pressure on yourself to actually go and do shit. Standing, looking at stuff, knowing you should be enjoying it. Statue of Liberty. Wow, that's exactly how I fucking thought it would look. <laughs> Having to take your photograph, you don't realise how much shite you photograph until you go somewhere good and your phone runs out of memory. Standing on top of the Empire State Building, deleting fry-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got an app called WhatsApp, right? All the kids, got it. People, people send you. <laughs> People send you pictures and videos and it just saves straight to your phone. And it's horrific shit people send. And I never knew I had a video of a guy fucking a hoover on my phone <laughs> until I was showing my mother my holiday photograph. <laughs> I'm flicking through them, giving my wee commentary. That was us on the first night, that was the view for the hotel mum. That was the wee Italian restaurant. That's where Harry met Sally, the restaurant. The pastrami sandwich wasn't very nice. That's a guy. I had cracking holiday, mum. Definitely. <laughs> recommend. Of course you watch it. If a guy has took the time to fuck a hoover, I will take the time to watch a guy fuck a hoover. <laughs> Lying. Watching it. You ever seen your own reflection in your phone? And you see how tragic you look at these moments. <laughs> Lying on your couch, big double chin, fucking dead behind the eyes. Your life is ending just watching a guy fuck a hoover. <laughs> is that a Henry or a Henrietta? He's fucking <laughs> And you need to reply to your mate that sent it. Ha, 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 ha. H, 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 Into the emoticons, there's that wee guy, mate, that fucking cries with laughter. <laughs> 15 of them, mate. Projectile tears of laughter are leaving my eyes, mate. There we go. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that was it. New York. Getting dragged into museums. Trying so hard to enjoy it. Just that voice in there. Going, shape, 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 shape. It's hard to... <laughs> Trying so hard. It's no shape, Kevin. Show some respect. It's fucking shape. It's an art gallery. It's full of shape. Shape, 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 shape. <laughs> Listening to the tour guide, and this is 300 years old. This was donated to the museum. I fuck, shape, 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 shape. <laughs> and, and you're fortunate the Tutankhamun exhibit is here for six weeks only. Trust me to land that fucking six weeks. Eh? <laughs> How shite will that be? Tutankhamun, the king of Egypt at 21. I bet he was a wee wank. Shape, 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 shape. Come on, Kevin, you're better than this. Let's see your show of strength. Excuse me, mate. Is that a Diego Rivera? You don't know who he is? You found a victim, Kev. All that hard work, give him it, both barrels. <laughs> never heard of Diego Rivera, mate, no. Never seen dreams of a Sunday afternoon in the Alameda. Arguably one of Rivera's most controversial works, my man. Why was it controversial? Well, because it depicted Don Ignacio Ramirez holding a placard that said God does not exist. The work caused uproar, mate, but Rivera refused to remove the placard until nine years later, stating that he doesn't have to hide behind Don Ignacio Ramirez to show his own atheist views and that he believes all religions are a form of collective neurosis. <laughs> Just put on that, mate. I don't know that shit. That's not a shit. Job done, Kev. Now get to the gift shop, buy a rubber and fuck off. I travel, travel a lot, I appreciate my life, travel, just in a lot of hotels, I've always got bad news for you, noticing that, hotels, always on. Well, un unfortunately sir, uh, the Wi-Fi is only available in the lobby area. Oh. Was it alright to masturbate in the lobby area? <laughs> That's what you say to them. Call them out on it. I might use your Wi-Fi in your lobby then, mate. And the websites I visit, that is between me and my browsing cookies. <laughs> your manager can deal with the inevitable negative reviews on TripAdvisor. <laughs> Some stunned couple. 
Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, uh, the rooms were spacious, the location was great, the staff were a delight, could not fault the food or the facilities, but on the final night there was a Scottish bloke ripping the head off it in the lobby. <laughs> It was bloody disgusting. Nothing subtle about it. He had his denims at his ankles, his feet on the coffee table. <laughs> he was using both his hands at one point. <laughs> he was shouting encouragement to himself. <laughs> he then demanded housekeeping bring him a hoover. It was rather bizarre. <laughs> Two stars. We won't be back. Two stars. <laughs> the Wi-Fi. Fucking killing this world, innit? The internet. I'm trying to cut loose. I'm trying to cut, I'm trying to stay offline. Driving me fucking nuts. I like technology. I appreciate what the geeks have done in this world. Just don't like the person that I become. As soon as it fails, as soon as it stops working, it sends me fucking I need a big angry primate. I've had too many of these rages. I'm quite a peaceful guy. Fucking laptop stopped searching for wireless networks a few weeks ago, right? I know that sounds a bit trivial, but that's enough to send me into a fucking piece of shit. Fucking, ooh, fucking shouting at it because I'm so out of my depth trying to figure it out. I, I, your laptop breaks, you've got two options, Johnny. You can hand it in to where you bought it, or you can phone up the technical support line. What option did you choose, Johnny? In your own time, Johnny. <laughs> well, I phoned up, Johnny. You could hand it in. Right, that's, that's part of my problem. I know I need to hand this computer into fucking the Apple store to speak to Mark with a C with his wee genius T-shirt on. <laughs> Talking about his band, yeah, we're called Skull Fracture. We're playing the unsigned ten to teen apart. He's big stupid, your lobs hanging down. <laughs> Gonna put your earrings back in, Mark, and stop putting people off calamari for life. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to phone up. A laptop was no longer searching for wireless networks. And people were calling it a first world problem. That just makes you angrier. I fucking know it's a first world problem. That's why I'm on the phone to the third world trying to get it fucking fixed. <laughs> I phoned up. I'm on the phone. Indonesia. Talking to my man. My man Gavin. He starts asking me questions. <laughs> I'm telling Gav the issue. Gav's asking me for my DHCP client ID. I said, I don't know what that means, Gav. Gav told me, click on system preferences. Then go to network settings and then advanced network settings. And they said in there you should see an IPVN phone number. And from that you should be able to see your DHCP client ID. I'm falling fucking getting excited here, Gav's on to something. <laughs> I said, yes, Gav, I can see a DHCP client ID. And he's asking me if it's configurated or deconfigurated. I said, well, Gav, it appears to be deconfigurated. Gav tells me to click on. I'm already there, Gav. Clicked on configure, done deal. And he goes, try again. I'm so fucking excited, Gav, to try again. <laughs> Tried it again. And the laptop connected to the wireless network. I thank Gav for his time. Then I'm left wondering, my mind is blown. Who the fuck undone that? Like, <laughs> I have never been anywhere near that part of the computer before. <laughs> so what the fuck happened between connecting to wireless networks and no connecting to... Did I have an MIT frat party in the living room one night? <laughs> Did I have Mark Zuckerberg in the boys' room for a couple of cans? It's got a bit out of hand. I fell asleep at six in the morning and rather than just shave off my eyebrows or draw a cock and balls on my face, some prankster has logged into my laptop and fucking deconfigurated my DHCP client ID. Kids in this world. I'm only 28. I still remember the world being a bit simpler. It's tragic when you hear the children going, Dad, 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 this iPad's not performing the software update. Dad. <laughs> and if I ever become a father, I don't know if I could handle that. I think I'll be saying, shut the fuck up, you wee too. <laughs> performing a software update. You're a wee guy. Go up to the loft, find a golf club. Go outside and chop some jaggy nettles. Go outside. Go <laughs> outside. Go there. Go and chop some jaggies. You're a wee guy. You your whole life to perform software updates. Go there and be bored. Decapitate a few dandelions. Get in the bushes. 
I've just been stung by a nettle. I'll get a fucking dock leaf then. <laughs> Learn some survival tactics. <laughs> I'll be a big walk. Just kick a plastic bottle down the street. <laughs> be at one with your foot. Get a big stick. Get a bit of dog shite on the end. <laughs> Control your bit fucking armed with a bit of dog shite on a stick. <laughs> it's a rite of passage to any child. Sitting up in your bedroom getting cyber bullied. Fucking go to your store with a bit of dog shite on a stick. <laughs> Be bored, their minds are too occupied. I used to be bored as a child. I was quite a creative wee guy. I was that fucking. I tried to start a boy band. I had mental ideas. <laughs> and my daughter, Element Four, that's what I called it. I had three mates who I gave aliases to air, fire, rain, wind. I told them about my plans. They laughed at me, called me gay boy. I thought, fuck yous. I went solo, big wind. Get into the kitchen, grabbing the radio, up to the bedroom, blank cassette and pressing, <laughs> pressing play and record at the same time. <laughs> With my lyrics that I wrote, big wind in the studio. <laughs> Baby, I've been thinking about you. <laughs> I think you're thinking about me too. Make sure my dad's not there in case I get fucking lettered. <laughs> when you said goodbye. It made me cry, baby. Oh. <laughs> then the voice that long, your eyes start to water, really adds a bit to it. Oh, baby. <laughs> I was fucking bored. I enjoyed childhood. Going out a big walk. Just showing up at your mate's door. Get in for your mate. Get in for somebody. Just battering the letterbox unannounced. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. Cassidy, it's Stu in. <laughs> I'm here to eat every crisp in this house. His name's Stuart Kevin. Where is he? Stoop star. <laughs> That's when you discovered the love you had for your own family. I see the wee dweebs. Well, I actually hate my mum and dad. Fucking get the house then. <laughs> A sleepover. That's when you discovered how much you loved your own mum and dad. <laughs> when you went and spent an evening in another family. That was an eye opener. We need that. The kids are too busy online. They're not socialising to this level. You need to go and spend time in another house. Discover you've got it good. That Saturday morning, returning home to your own house after a sleepover. Just want to cuddle your mum and dad. <laughs> As if you just served in Afghanistan, mum. <laughs> dad, bring it in, big guy. I know I don't tell you a lot, but I love you. The Cassidys are fucking weirdos. It would start off all right, you'd go in for stew. And then you're up in the bedroom, playing the computer. He's making you use an unofficial control pad that his grand bought him for Christmas. You're letting that slide, even though it's frustrating, you're through on goal, trying to shoot stew. Where's the square button? Stew, stew, stew. <laughs> oh, it's not square, it's number nine on that pad. Fucking piece of shit. Fuck you, stew, fuck you. <laughs> and his mum comes into the bedroom. Kevin, we're going to phone a, a Chinese. Would you like to stay for some Chinese? Fucking jackpot, of course. <laughs> Of course I'll stay for some Chinese. You start to relax. I like this family. I reckon I could be a Cassidy. Everything's going to plan. <laughs> Friday night, home delivery. And you get shouted down the stairs, made to set the table. They're setting the table for a home delivery. Again, letting it slide. This is the Cassidy's. It's no fucking Christmas day. But Phil, maybe this is their hang. Maybe they set the table for a home delivery. <laughs> and the food arrives. You don't recognise one fucking thing that they've ordered. <laughs> Not once was I consulted during the ordering process. I know I'm 10, I know I'm a guest, but ordering a home delivery is a democratic process. But again, <laughs> let it slide. The dad's shown you the food. Okay, Kevin, this is the, this is the King Scallop Szechuan style. This is the Kung Po Lamb. This is the sweet and chili bean curd. This isn't the Chinese food, Mr. Cassidy. Where's all the yellow shit? Where's all the <laughs> chicken boss, chips, curry sauce? You'd get fucking laughed out of China for that shite, Mr. Cassidy. 
and they start saying grace. They da, thanking the Lord for a home delivery. Just fucking tip the delivery driver. Job done. <laughs> You're trying to plate yourself up some food. You're going to Mr. Cassidy. Um, where's, the, where's the rice? Oh, just, just give us a few minutes on the rice, Kevin. It shouldn't be long. Oh, they never, they never sent the rice. I hate when that happens, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, no, 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 Sheila's just boiling the rice. <laughs> oh, they sent it no boiled, Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> no, Kevin, they never sent anything. We don't order rice from the Chinese. I mean, why would we pay two pound for rice when there's a whole jar of rice on the worktop there? That would just be stupid, wouldn't it? Alarm bells are ringing. We're having fucking hush rice. With a home delivery on a Friday night, we're having it with house strength. <laughs> the evenings took a sinister turn, glaring across the table at we stew. I'm going to fucking expose you. <laughs> this is going to finish you, stew, in school on Monday. This will be your nickname for eternity. A wee house strength, even if you're <laughs> driving a Ferrari. Oh, he's driving a Ferrari, is he? Who? House strength. <laughs> Finish the food, seeing the family, and I, I don't know if I could be a Cassidy. And you get made to wash the dishes. Kevin, why don't you make a little game of it? Stuart can wash them, you can dry them. Fucking great game, Mrs. Cassidy. <laughs> non stop scream in this house on a Friday night. <laughs> Maybe we can change ends at half, or is that a bit too out there? <laughs> then the gran arrives, you get dragged into the living room. Yeah, we always watch a movie together as a family, Kevin. It's just our little Friday night thing. Are you coming in? We're going to watch The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Have you seen it, Kevin? <laughs> no, Mrs. Castle, but I heard it's fantastic. I heard it's hilarious. Having to sit watching this fucking... How the fuck did I get out of here? I need to get home. I need home. Home. I'm homesick. I'm only four streets away. I'm fucking homesick. <laughs> Kevin, why don't you just phone your dad and see if you can stay overnight? That would be nice. Have a wee sleepover. How the fuck do I imagine that, Kev? The overnight package with these freaks. <laughs> you, you, Kevin, phone your dad. This is before mobile phones. You had to use the living room phone. The whole family are sitting there. And then phone your dad, Kevin, phone your dad. The hand that rocks the cradle's been paused. They're all listening into your phone call. <laughs> Ask if you can stay overnight. You're on the phone to your dad, solely dependent on your tone to give a cross to your dad that you're being held against your will. <laughs> this is going to take an acting performance, Kev. We need out of here. This isn't a family. This is a cult. Phone your dad, Kev. Phone my dad. I'm trying to get a bit of lump in the throat going. Hold on, my dad hears I'm crying. Comes and rescues me. Where are you, Kev? I'm going to come and don't fucking do him. Where are you? Where are you? I'm <laughs> oh, just, it's ringing, it's ringing. Hi, Dad, Dad, Dad? <laughs> Dad, is it all right if I stay overnight at Stuart Cassidy's house? <laughs> of course it is, Kevin, you have a great night. Your dad's no fucking getting it at all. <laughs> Daddy, you sure I've got no plans in the morning? I thought I had some plans. Do you know, say something about I had something on. Nothing on in the morning, Kevin. It's a Saturday morning and you're fucking ten years old, pal. No plans. <laughs> That was it, you'd signed up. You were one of them for the evening. <laughs> Kevin, unpause the movie. I, I think it's you that's got the doofer, Mr. Cassidy. It's me who's got the what? The doofer, the doofer. Is that what you call the remote control, the doofer? He's fucking laughing. The ma's laughing, the whole family, wee hoose rice is laughing. They're all laughing at you. They're ripping the piss out you, Kev. The doofer, the doofer. <laughs> fucking hook the da, Kev, hook the da. <laughs> Take the whole family out. One jab to the da. No family recovers from a jab to the da. The doofer, they'd fucking knock him out, Kev. <laughs> and you're nudging me, Stu. One will go up to the bedroom. One will go up, who strikes? One will go to bed. And the da catches you. You try to get Stuart to go to bed with you, Kevin. There's just something you're not telling us. <laughs> you're on thin ice, Mr. Cash, the old bastard. Eventually, up to the bedroom. Wee house just goes to sleep straight away. You're left alone. 
on his floorboards inside a Scooby-Doo sleeping bag. <laughs> you've not even got a pillow, you've got a cushion off the couch with a zip on your neck, you haven't you turned it? <laughs> Alone, breathing in their family smell, their house smell. <laughs> the whole family smell the same. I recognise that smell. That's the way he smells when I sit beside him in school. I wonder if he stunk out the house or the house stunk him out. I wonder what came first. <laughs> Listen to these noises. How fucking loud is your bedroom clock, house rice? Ticking away every second of this torture. I need out of here. I wonder what time I can leave here. I think five in the morning's a bit early. <laughs> That's the target, Kev. Five in the morning. Anybody catches you trying to leave. You're not going to stay for breakfast, Kevin. <laughs> wonder what you get for breakfast on this shit. Oh, wonder. <laughs> what would you like for your breakfast, Kevin? Oh, maybe, maybe some eggy bread. Eggy bread? Is that what you call French toast? Oh, that shite starts again. <laughs> oh, the fucking house rices. He's laughing at you. <laughs> You're not going to stay, Kevin. We're going to have Alpen. Do you like Alpen? Mm, yes, Mrs. Cassidy. I love nothing better on a Saturday morning than a big bowl of Alpen. That's what gets me through the week. Mm. <laughs> Get something in that frying pan, you fucking boot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Glasgow, thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Top ground. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers to you, mate. Get off that guy. Cheers to Johnny. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Back. Get fucking back. It's become a hostage situation now. Get back. Back, back, hold. You at the door. Back, back, back. This is it. <laughs> You're supposed to leave that bit much longer when you go off stage, but there's a big flight of stairs there, and I just. <laughs> What's the point? Can I wait down? You go way back up. <laughs> so we're back. Nice crowd, man. You all right? Yes. <laughs> Can you get what? A selfie. I'm kind of busy the new hen, but yes. <laughs> Oh. Top crowd. What a venue, man. Wow, I'd love to be a priest up here for the sitting on the. Oh, oh, man. Oh, Lord the Savior. Pray for us all. Oh. But an religion in Glasgow, eh? How could this backfire? Oh, oh man. Believe in the Lord, Johnny. Yes, you do. Good. Good man. I don't, man. I don't, I don't know. I, I grew up a Catholic. Don't really give a fuck these days. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe go to chapel. Christmas Day, Easter Sunday. One of their Catholics. Go to the big games. I mean. I'm not going to go to the league matches, but I'll go to the cup final. Listen. <laughs> Actually, the old priest up there talking about Jesus and when he comes back, when he comes back, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> coming back? How fucking long we giving the guy, man? 2015. <laughs> I think it's fair to say Jesus is fucked off, isn't it? <laughs> He's found new pals. He's ditched us. The millennium, that was a turning point for a lot of people. Jesus never showed up at his own 2000th. <laughs> that's not your 40th or a 21st, that's a 2000th. <laughs> I picture the guy, Jesus, what he'd be like in the second coming. Imagine the ego on that guy, arguing with nightclub bouncers. Do you know who my dad is? <laughs> Don't care who your dad is, pal. You're not getting in with sandals on. <laughs> <laughs> bringing religion into football, that back. We need to bring football into religion. That's, that'll get people going back to their place of worship, get the tunes a bit better. Give them a loaf, give them a fish. 
Jesus of Nazareth, you serve up a dish. <laughs> Jesus! I had a yank ask me about the old firm before, and he's gone. People exaggerate it a wee bit. Danny Dyer, all right, guys. I had a guy, an American. He's gone, he's gone, man, is it fucking true, man, that if you walk into the wrong fucking bar in Glasgow on soccer day, <laughs> soccer day, you don't laugh at the guy. Sorry, Dwayne, continue. <laughs> and he goes, I heard this one story, man, this guy had the wrong T-shirt on, and the other team's fans, they walked on over, and they didn't beat the shit out of him. Instead, they fucking grabbed him by the ears, and they sucked on one of his eyeballs. It's like some disrespect, some tribal shit. Does that fucking go on, man, over a soccer match? It would fucking break my heart to deny that. <laughs> I said yes, Dwayne, sadly. I've seen many a match marred by such incidents. <laughs> An old firm game, the whole stadium sitting with fucking monocles in. <laughs> Could they get you as well, Kenny? Oh, I couldn't believe it, mate. Never drink an air again, man. Oh, he's got contact lenses, Athenian bastard. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it genuinely means a lot to see so many people. 16 nights, very humbling. Thank you, good people, for that. I'd just like to. Thank you. Yes. I stung my. I done my first ever show. When I just left school, 17, and my dad was there, and my mum and dad are here tonight, and it's our 40th wedding anniversary, so lots of love to them. Thanks for everything. Paddy and Andy, thanks very much. Good night. Let's go. Take care.